do forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, that he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve you. And they said, We are witnesses. He said that Put away the foreign gods that are among you, and incline your hearts to the Lord the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. this morning is taken from Paul's first letter to the Church of Thessalonica, chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. We do not want you to be misuninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to you, Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took a flask of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept, but at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him into the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later, the other bridegrooms came also, saying, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you. Yeah. 
down first place in control of the kingdom of heaven on earth. Now, I'm not going to embarrass anybody by calling them by name, but there are times when those of us in responsibility just as soon shake the dust off. Being the junior warden has its moments. Being the senior warden having to be ready to chair the vestry and meet with the interim priest and do all of the administrative stuff and sign the checks when the, there's a rector, blah, 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 blah. And it gets tedious at times, and it never goes quite unacknowledged, and the acknowledgement is not always praise. <clears throat> but they have the illusion that if Jesus comes and overthrows this worldly kingdom and we are in charge, it's going to be different. So how many of you have harbored the idea that if you were me, you would preach interesting sermons? <laughs> as a proper student. 
comes over and says, you know, there's a sweetheart deal. I said, no. <laughs> 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 no. No. No, no, no. And he's like, I could appoint you to remain rector here. This is really amazing. And I'm like, there's nothing left. And so for a year, for a year, I went to, after the sabbatical visitation at EBS. I went to a friend of mine's parish in Baltimore and just sat in a pew. And there were Sundays when tears were very close to the surface and I had to just suck it up because priests don't cry. <laughs> and I met with her for spiritual direction and counsel for a year before I was willing to supply on a Sunday anywhere. With time, I got back a little bit of my inner strength and perspective. But I had run out of oil and there was no place to get it. 7-Eleven doesn't sell that kind of oil. In some ways, I believe God sends us to be spent. In some ways, our discipleship and our baptismal ministry is exhausting if we take it seriously day by day, week by week, and year by year. If we're going to respect the dignity of every human being, if we're going to work for justice, peace, we are going to be exhausted. And it is true that the Hebrew tradition says oil is righteousness. That's present in Psalm 139, Proverbs 6, and Job 18. The oil is righteousness. That's because we cannot stop working to correct what is wrong, what is harmful, and what is unjust. That work is exhausting. Is there enough oil in you to volunteer for one of the commissions, to serve with Linda Works in hospitality, to work with Sarah and I on stewardship, to build up the beatific presence of this holy space with Wally, to have a passion for adult communication, for Bible study, for conversation, to meet together, to stand together, to love your neighbor, to build up this body of Christ. I think there's a lot of love here. Enough to feed our neighbors, to take meals to someone who's recovering from surgery, to make a partnership down the street with our Native American ancestors about food. Fran was so moved on Monday in the outreach visitation with the Abenaki that we went online and made a monthly automatic donation for offsetting your food insecurity. And today, yesterday, this weekend, is better. I noticed their flags in the car. I, in my family and friends, have had people serve in all of the armed services. And a nephew died of brains. My former husband was an officer in the army, served in Vietnam. Some of my classmates died. My uncle flew the Burma pump to the Air Force. I have buried people in Arlington Cemetery. And that is such a experience. You better be on time and you have a certain set, limited time to do the burial. Case then takes you to the site. And there is a precision of Alden, and the whole hillside is covered with flags and monuments and grave markers for those who gave.
gave the ultimate gift themselves. I just retired at 24 years as one of the members of the Ethics Board of the Department of Defense. Some years ago, we considered a protocol for a desert storm, for special trained ops that would go into areas that might contain agents of gas or bacterial weapons. They had to be immunized against everything we could provide protection against. And the protocol was a mandatory vaccination for these special operation groups. No informed consent. And so the protocol called for a waiver of informed consent. And that is a heavy lift for ethics approval at any time in the U.S post some of our egregious histories. We passed it because the argument was as follows. If one person goes in unimmunized and gets sick, the operation is destroyed. So you can't go in unless you comply with this. Yes, we could consent you here and immunize you here, but there are certain prophylactic drugs we must give you just before you enter that site. And we all must do it together. And it is about the mission. It is not about me. My friends, if you've been moved as I have many times, by what solidarity and obedience to higher authority and train for the mission means to our military, can you please be inspired by your baptismal ministry and the presence of God in your life to be in the same solidarity within the body of Christ and the authority of God as Joshua says, are our Lord and we will obey you. Can you not see that we are called to the ministry of Christ in this place at this time? We have the oil of grace to strengthen us to hope for a better tomorrow, a wonderful river to come. To stand with those who grieve and be present with the least, the last, and the lost in Swanton community. Do you see Christ in the eyes of the child who doesn't have enough to eat? In the one that is so privileged they can't choose a toy out of all that surround them to be content? Can you see him in the face of the stranger looking to find a home or gasoline to get to a medical appointment? Can you see him in the crying child and widow in a war zone? We are sent for such a moment. your lamps and your hearts <clears throat> full of the oil that is Christ incarnate. Keep your reserves in place. Build up your hope, your faith, your solidarity. I trust God will always renew the supply of oil for his work of justice and righteousness. so that you may today and every day be ready when
through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
team is still involved in um, receiving and, and uh, assisting the rector as the rector uh, comes into our presence and as part of that um, having the rectory prepared. So there's a whole group of people of the transition team that will and implement whatever the ministry has us to do about that. Um, so those are the sort of stage of where we are with the transition team. I, if you're supposed to be a transition team and welcoming group for the new rector for at least the first year after the rector uh, 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 comes, so that there's this group that's already engaged and helps move them into the uh, community. Thank you. Other announcements? Just a word. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, I just want to thank you all for my gift for my tragic car incident. <laughs> it still haunts me. I love that car. <laughs> thank you for your kind words and your cards. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Just a reminder, Pius Romani is happening this week and pickup is Thursday and Friday? Pickup is Friday. Pickup is Friday. Friday. So I hope your orders are in. I understand there's a bunch of pies to be made. Um, my office hours this week are going to be on Tuesday rather than Thursday from 2 to 6. So if you want to see me, it's nice to let me know that you're coming so that I, I can move people in such a way that you don't have multiple people with different agendas. Anyway, uh, I try to be there for you all. And... All right, um, that's that. What's my other? Oh, yes. So, Natalie, Wally, Betsy, and I, and Fran all did the Dobson Convention. And a week ago, Thursday, we had our pre-convention meeting on Zoom. And uh, it was fairly benign. It went from 6 to, what, 9-ish. And then on Saturday, we were at St. Paul's. Convention started at 10, ended at 4, with the worship interspersed with the guests who talked about business partnerships as a way to revitalize waning congregations. And from our perspective, this is um, another version of something that's been circulating in the church for probably 20 years, at least in our experience, at least in Maryland. And I, I don't know if it's just getting to Vermont, but this was part two of a series by a priest from California. And um, there was some excitement around the idea that maybe if we started a partnership and we use space for XYZ, um, then that would be something that would expand our service and our presence in the community and that's really the purpose of this particular effort. It's also true, we had a clergy online meeting from 4 to 5 on Wednesday and then we had the business of the convention on Thursday night from 6 <coughs> until 10.30, which included eight resolutions and election of people to various committees and uh, offices within the diocese. As agreed in the contract, prior to, at the call of Bishop Shannon, there was to be a mutual ministry review. That's what you call it when I did it here, but it's probably got other names when it's the bishop and others. So 48 people in the diocese participated in the process, and a priest from the House of Delegates, um, Gay Jennings, gave the report, and it just sounded to me like every mutual review I've ever heard in my life, which is strengths, weaknesses, challenges, and threats. So you have opportunities like every place, but what I heard really inspired me at the end, which is Vermont is an interesting state. 
feeling about us. But you are one of the whitest states in our country. And you elected a black female bishop. And so you, I know, that's how I feel too. You have a challenge for that person in that skin in this state to have a successful bishop's ministry. And it'll take the whole church to do that. And she's not going to get it perfect. She came in during COVID, and it's been challenging. And I'm sure she's made mistakes just like I did this morning. I didn't check the book. And you can make a big issue out of that if you want to. But I don't know why you would. But if you're looking for something, you will find it. But if you look for something to build up, you will find that too. So I want to encourage say, you, the saints of Holy Trinity, to hold our bishop in prayer as her ministry with ours continues in this diocese to the glory of God. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners and sinners. Again and again you call us to return. Through prophets and saviors you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood you reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending
need to stretch 